Hey, welcome back to Mark Kelly Farm. If you watched our last video about making that knife, this little beauty right here, now we're going to make the leather for it. You don't need a lot of crazy expensive tools, even though I got some of them. But I'm going to try to keep it simple, keep it basic. So if you don't have a lot of tools, you don't have to go out and buy a lot of stuff. So let's get with it. So get yourself some cardstock or some manila envelope material or something like that. Um, I got some cardstock here. And what you want to do is we want to figure out a pattern for your sheet. So take your knife, lay it down on your material. And then you start drawing some lines. You'll see that the pattern is quite a bit wider than the knife. That's because there's going to be spacer material put in here around these edges and stitched in. So there's room for the knife inside the sheet. And then there's going to be a second piece of material that goes, or leather, that goes on top like that after we get the spacers on and this back portion here is going to have a flap that comes over and buttons right there to hold the knife in and then it's also going to have this piece here that's going to fold over on the back and make our belt loop put your belt in and we'll sew that in before we sew the two pieces together and you'll see on these materials I wrote which side is the suede side of the leather so when you put this on the leather and you start tracing around you know which sides up it's gonna be you're gonna have to run into front back and left right situations when you're making this so this is going to be a right hand, uh, right hand scabbard or sheath. So it's going to fit on my right side like this. So we got to keep that in mind. So we also, like I said, want to mark the inside, which is the suede side. And that's what we've done. So we're going to get the piece of leather out. And we're going to trace this stuff out. And we are going to cut. So I look through my scrap pile, I keep everything that could possibly be used in the future and nothing was big enough for either one of these pieces. So I had to bust out my new leather and this is all I got left. This, this used to be a side of leather, but I'm going to have to be ordering some more. So we'll lay these pieces out and the, the, part, the, the side that said suede side I obviously put down because this is not the suede side. And that looks like pretty much the best orientation to get these cut out. I'll fit them a little bit better. But uh, we'll mark them and then we'll cut them out. Okay, we got the pieces marked. I just use, use this little awl right here to mark it. I don't use pen or pencil because I don't want pen or pencil marks showing through on my leather. And this is the other piece over here. Getting kind of... Uh, Slim pickings with my leather. Got this kind of a blemish here, but it's going to be on the back side so you won't see it. And then this piece is actually going to be folded over, so it's going to cover part of that. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, a good tip when you're working with leather cut your fingernails because you move your fingernails across this leather, it's going to start putting marks in it. So if you're doing some stuff, especially if you're selling to somebody, you don't want to have it all marked up. And make sure your hands are clean, too, because if there's any dirt or grease or something on your hands, you're going to mark up your leather. So I'm going to start cutting this stuff out. So you see right here, we're coming to a really tight inside corner. So what I like to do for that is take my uh, hole punch, and I'm going to punch... Uh, Mm, probably that diameter of a hole, maybe that one. 
and that gives a really clean transition to those two cuts because if you leave it really tight, really tight point, it could start tearing out later. Uh, you do the same thing in metal work. Sometimes you'll drill a hole to keep things from cracking or breaking. If you got a crack running, you'll drill a hole on the end of it to stop it. But that's basically what we're going to do with this. So here's our pieces cut out. Remember this piece is going to fold over here with a snap. And this piece is going to fold backwards. Uh, yes, this is the suede side. And when you bend this over, this, this side right here is going to be showing. But the knife handle is going to cover some of that. And once everything gets tanned or whatever, and we'll smooth that out a little bit, it won't matter. Uh, don't be alarmed if it doesn't match like perfectly because you're going to come through and refine the edges later anyway. So that's okay. But that's what she looks like for now. So you see I've came in on the inside of the sheath, both pieces, and I've drawn a line just freehand about three-eighths of an inch from the sides wherever they're going to be stitched. So this does two things for me. This shows me how big a piece is I need to cut to go in here, and it also gives me a, a line to glue to when I put the contact cement on here. It'll show me where I, I need to put the contact cement. Um, we need to make these little pieces right here. Keep in mind, after you draw these lines, take your knife and set it in place. And make sure you're going to be within those lines. And that you're going to be able to fit after you get it. That's why we made it a little wide. Now, you can see we didn't follow this contour right here. That's because this knife needs to pull out of this sheath. So if you were to follow that contour, that's going to be too tight. So you want to make it so it'll straight pull out. So as this knife comes out, this point can come straight out. I've done that. I've made that mistake before. I've done all the lever work and I made the mistake of making that contour. You go to shove the knife in there, it won't go in. And that is a lot of work to to be ruined like that so yeah make sure your knife fits you can do it on both but uh, they're both patterned off of each other so you should be fine if, if one fits one it'll fit the other you'll also notice down on the bottom we're going to purposely hold this one short we're going to leave a little channel in there so any dirt or debris or water or anything that gets inside of this thing can can come out the bottom now, before we get too far along, uh, we're going to have to fold this over. And you can see I've marked with the awl where it goes. And that's going to be a, give me a gluing area. Most belts are about an uh, inch and a half to two inches, so we've left plenty of room in here for a belt. So we're going to put contact cement in this square, and we're going to put contact cement on here. And we're going to fold that over, and then we're going to be able to stitch it. Okay, we got the contact cement applied. This is what we're using. Make sure it's contact cement and not rubber cement. They usually have these little paddles on the inside, help you spread it. This bottle's actually empty, but I just kept it because of the little paddle. It's got a little tube now, and it doesn't have a paddle, so that's why I held on to it. But you want to wait until this is almost dry to the touch. You see how it's shiny now? It's going to kind of get dull. And then you'll be able to touch it in your finger. It'll, it'll almost feel dry. But uh, don't worry. Uh, it will still stick together. That's just the way you do contact cement. You wait till it's almost dry. And then uh, it'll hold it together nicely while we stitch it. Okay, it's looking good. What we're going to do real quick before we do this, before we fold it over, I marked where that fold's going to be. You want to come in here with some water and uh, wet this area and that's going to help it become a little more pliable and you want to do both sides and that'll soften it up it'll keep your leather from cracking too and it'll help it fold over a little bit better so just moisten it both sides 
Okay, now we're going to fold this over. You're only going to get one chance at this, so you got to do it right. And make sure you're lined up perfectly. There we go. I'm going to press that down. And then you can see where we wet the top. It's folding over a little better. I'm going to wet it a little bit more. But uh, that's how we do it. See, now it's stuck. It's not coming off. I keep these little spring clamps in my kit. I just clamped it on there to help hold that down while it dries. And it'll help hold its shape a little bit better. Got this little tool here. It's a grooving tool. So you just run it along the edge and it cuts a little groove. So I want to go around here where I'm going to stitch, cut a groove. And that helps lay the stitch down in the groove so it doesn't protrude as much when it sticks out. So we got that groove in. Um, this just rides along the side of the leather and that gives you your spacing. When you do this inside one, what I do is I just get something that's like a straight edge and I just run it right along there so I can still keep that straight edge. Now to measure your stitches, what you would normally do is you take a tool like this and they make these with different size, uh, different spacings. So what you do is you would put your first point right in that corner and then you roll it across pressing down and it's going to put little indentions to where your uh, stitch marks are going to be. But for the purpose of showing you that you don't need all these little tools, I'm going to eyeball this and I'm just going to mark it with my uh, little sharpie felt tip pen where the holes are going to go. I'm not going to use this tool at all and you'll see it comes out just fine. So that's what it looks like, and it would look very similar if I'd used uh, the spacing tool. This thing here, it's uh, fairly close, but obviously you need a hole in the corner, right? So you put one in each corner, and then the little sides, there was enough room where we put one in the middle of that, and then I put one in the middle, and then I split that in half, and then I split those spaces in half, and that's really all you got to do. It's not uh, rocket surgery. Oh, I forgot to show you earlier how I cut the leather. Uh, some people use an X-Acto knife. And if you've ever seen uh, Hank Strange's channel, uh, he does a lot of vid videos with Andrew's Custom Leather. They're really good videos. I recommend it if you're interested in holsters and stuff like that. But you can pick up a lot of leather tips too because uh, that guy's been doing it for a long time and he's really good. Um, he'll get down, he puts a piece of carpet remnant down and he's got like an X-Acto knife and he just runs it right down into that carpet and he can cut right around really easily. Check out his video if you're interested in that technique. That way you're not scoring and scoring and scoring and screwing your leather up. I have a really good pair of shears that I use and it cuts right through this. I think it's like 9 or 10 ounce tooling leather. Uh, mows right through it. I used to use these safety shears. And the problem with the safety shears is they got that uh, kind of a serrated edge. And it leaves that serration if you're cutting the wrong side of the letter. You always got to be mindful of which side of the letter you're cutting on. So I went away from these and now I'm using these shears because I can cut on either side and it's just a straight edge. So we're going to stitch that up. Now you can look up a saddle stitch. And do it that way. You're just going to pre-punch all those holes. Um, I've seen a guy even drill the holes with a little drill bit on the drill press uh, to make it a little easier for him. I use this thing. It's called a stitch-all. Um, kind of a play on the words. An awl is what you use to poke holes in something, and this makes stitches. So, um, But it will stitch all of anything that you want to try to stitch. Uh, it had a little spool that went in here. I stopped using that because the thread keeps binding up on that spool in there uh, when it's trying to pull out of that hole and I've run into problems where I've, I've broke the thread. So I've since just take the big spool of thread, run it through there. I just leave this sitting on the table. It works just fine and it feeds a whole lot better. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the end of this, pull this thread back a little bit to where there's probably about that much hanging out. You want it to be able to come out before you get to the end of the 
uh, needle right here. And you're going to poke that all the way through on your first hole. And uh, I have a little wooden block that I use. It's got a slot cut in it. And I put it underneath the leather, and then I just punch that all down into that slot. So you'll punch it all the way through. And then I usually unwrap this. This is a tensioner right here. So you can see that um, I'll unwrap that so it flows through here a little better just as I start. Once you poke through, you're going to take this thread and you're going to pull it out. And you're going to pull enough thread out to where it's the three times the length that you would need to go around that square or the, the rectangle. And that's going to stay on the back side. You'll pull it through on the back side. And then you'll pull it out, go to your next hole, punch it through. You're going to wrap it one time around this tensioner again. And then once you punch through... As you pull back on it, and I'll show you what it looks like, it's going to leave a little loop of thread right here as you pull back. So you're going to take the end of this thread, run it through that loop, pull it, and then pull the awl back out, and that'll make a knot on the inside of that hole. But I'll show you what it looks like. So we've got that poked through on our first hole. We pushed it through. We pulled the thread out. It's better to have too much than not enough. You don't want to get three quarters of the way around that thing and then end up with no, not enough thread on this side. Uh, then you're screwed. you got to pull it out and start over. So let me punch it through the next hole and you'll see what that looks like. Okay, we've rewrapped uh, one turn around our tensioner right here. Uh, we've pulled back through the leather. You don't want a lot of uh, stitch or uh, a lot of thread sticking out of there. Pull it back through to where you got about that much. If you've got too much, you're, you're going to be loose once you get the, the needle through. So that's about all you need. Also, you're going to notice these needles have kind of a flat side and a narrow side. You don't want to go uh, flat side, flat side, flat side, because then they call what you get is a postage stamp effect to where um, the leather will start ripping. So turn your needle sideways to where your flat side is going this way instead of this way. So let me punch that through and I'll show you what it looks like on the back side and what to do with it. So we've punched it through on our next hole and then we've pulled it back a little bit. And when you pull it back, it's going to leave that little loop of thread. And then what you do is you take the running end of your thread that you've pulled through and you're going to put it through that hole. Just like that. And you're going to pull it all the way through. Now when you pull that all back out through, that's going to be your stitch. And you're going to continue doing that all the way around. You want to make sure when you're pulling back through that you're not uh, creating tension on this thread. Because then you'll pull this, this thread back through the other side and it won't look very appealing. So I've set the camera up. I'm going to show you a couple stitches. I, I won't run you through the whole thing because I don't want to bore you. But uh, we'll show you how it works. So I've got just a little bit of thread. Remember, we're going to turn it to where we're not going to get that postage stamp effect. I'm going sideways. And I'm going to line up with my slot in my little wooden uh, deal here. And then I just pop it through. Just like that. You see that stitch goes down in there? And as it's doing that, it's pulling thread through here as I push down. Alright. So then I turn it over. I shove it the rest of the way through. And then when you pull it back, you get that little loop of thread. Put your running in through. Just like that. Now when you pull it back through, you'll see it pops that thread right into the hole. Let me do one more for you. It's a long, tedious process if you have a lot to do, but it makes it that much more satisfying that uh, you've done it yourself. You tell people you've done those stitches one at a time by hand. They go, like, wow, really? Like, yep, that's how you do it. That's how John Wayne would have done it. <laughs>
So you watch that thread pull in there and it'll suck that right back into that hole. All right, I'll continue on. We'll get this all the way around here and I'll show you what to do on the last stitch. All right, I'm on the last stitch. So the last two stitches, I did it on the last stitch and I'm gonna do it on this um, final stitch is you're gonna wrap it through twice. So go through the loop once, and then you're gonna come back through twice. And that kind of creates a knot. Actually, every time you stitch, you're creating a knot, but this is kind of a double knot. And your last stitch hole will be the same as your first stitch hole. You're running right back through that same hole. So we got our little half of a square knot here, and we're gonna pull that knot right down into that hole. Pops right in and disappears. So you don't have a knot on either side. It's just the thread coming out. And then you're gonna get your razor knife and you're gonna stick it right down almost in that hole. And you're gonna, sorry you can't see it, but you're gonna cut that, cut that off right down in that hole. And I did a little boo-boo. I got a little point on my leather there, but not too bad. So we're going to cut that flush with the hole. Just like that. So you don't have a lot of string sticking out or anything like that. And you can see for the most part, my stitching went fairly well. It took me about five minutes. But you'll see down in this corner, see how the... The thread from the other side pulled through a little bit. It's not a problem. It's just not visually appealing. You're still just as tight as you would be. But uh, what happened was, like I told you, if you got your fingers around this on that string when you're pushing through, it's going to create too much tension and it pulls that thread back through from the other side from the last stitch. So make sure you're not holding on to that thread when you're pushing through uh, leave it out like that so that's our first little bit of stitching there and you can notice um, we're going to do stitching along the edge here and that stitching is going to stop up here so i've kind of stayed away from that so we're not going to interfere um, this isn't going to interfere once we get the stitching up here so we'll be able to come down and go right around so keep that in mind when you're setting your things up. Make sure you're not covering up another uh, line of stitching. But it's starting to look like something. Got a belt loop on the back. All right, we wet that loop. We put the clamp on it. You can see folds over nice and tight. And when the knife goes in there, it's going to sit just about like that. So the knife is kind of covering that suede area, you're not going to see much of it. It's really not going to matter. This is going to fold over for the snap down here. What we're going to do is we're going to punch the hole for the snap on this end here. And then we're going to wait till we get our spacers on. And then before we sew anything up, we're going to put everything together, fold this over, figure out where it is, where that hole ends up. I'll put a pencil in that hole and I'll make a mark on this piece of leather that's going to be sitting there and then that'll tell me where the hole goes in this and then we'll punch that hole this side of the snap has to be put in before we sew this on obviously and then that snap can be put in anytime doesn't matter so this is our little flap that's going to have the hole in it I just eyeball it um, you want about the same thickness all the way around. So if you put it here, you got the same space here as you do here and here. So that's what you're shooting for. So you're looking about right there is going to be your hole. So 
Make sure you got the right size punch. I've already measured it. These are the things that you're looking at right here. So find the find the punch that that just barely fits into. You want kind of a snug fit, and that's what that one is there. So you'll just locate. Always punch down from the top of the smooth side of the leather. You locate your hole where you want it. Make sure you're in the center. Take a look at it, and just snap it in there. Move it around, and that creates your hole. All right. So this is obviously going to be your outer portion once it folds over. So that's going to be your smooth button side right there. So that goes in that way. It's really snug. Just what we wanted. Press it in there. You'll end up with something like that. Now on this side is going to be the snap side. This is the button side that's going to be on the front of this. And then this will be on the inside of this in here to hold the other side of that button on. But our snap side goes on here. So you got this little anvil thingy here. So put your button on that anvil. The kit comes with these. It comes with a little bag. Tandy leather. Dot com. There used to be Tandy Leather stores all over the country, but uh, all the brick and mortar stores have pretty much closed up, so you got to order online. But Tandy Leather has anything you need. Hobby Lobby also has a small leather section, but you're not going to find the good tooling leather there. You're going to have to get that from Tandy. The leather that they got there comes in like an 8x10 section. It's okay for doing little stuff, little projects, but if you need heavier leather, you're going to have to order that online. But they have all these little tools. They got the stitch all. Uh, I think it's probably $12, $14. You can buy a bag of these snaps. Uh, they come in brass and they come in silver like this. Uh, all of my hardware on the knife is in brass, so I like to go with a brass button. But uh, the little button kit is not very expensive. Uh, it's got the little punch. It's got the little... Um, point on the end that actually goes inside of that stud that's coming through and as you hammer this you want to kind of spin it so it gets even uh, pressure all the way around there okay it mushrooms the top over. If you can see that, that's what we're looking for, but we're still not tight. This hammer is not quite heavy enough. Let me get my big dog out. This one's a little heavier. This is what I use for tooling leather, hitting the tools with. A little bit heavier. So, Still spins a little bit. I'm going to hit it a couple more times. I don't want it to spin. Okay, now it's nice and snug. That's how you do a button. And that part goes here. This part and this part goes on the other piece once we figure out where it's going to go. It uses the same diameter hole. So we'll come back and do that on this piece once we figure out where it's going to go. Right now we're going to start cutting these strips that go in here. 3 eighths of an inch wide. you got to find some leather with the same contour. doesn't matter which side, smooth side or suede side goes up or down. It, they're both going to be glued to either side. So it doesn't matter. So whatever piece you can find, hopefully in your scrap pile, to make those pieces, that's what you use. So we've got this first piece cut out. It's going to lay right in there like that, all the way down. Cut it a little long, that's fine. We can trim that off later after everything's stitched up. You want to leave yourself a little wiggle room. But it's going to go on there just like that. So we're going to cut this one now. What this does is not only spaces out uh, room for the knife to sit in there, 
you can see that uh, it's, it's almost the same thickness. But it also keeps the blade from cutting in and cutting your stitches. It'll ride on that leather instead of going in and, and slicing all your stitches loose. So I've made my outside trace. So I just come in 3 eighths of an inch and I'm just eyeballing this line here. And the reason why we go with 3 eighths, if you notice when we do our stitch groover, it's going to go about 3 sixteenths in. So that's going to hit right at the middle of that strip. So that's kind of why we go 3 eighths. And these are adjustable. You can go in as far as you want. You can do a double stitch. You can do whatever you want. But uh, we got that set at about 3 sixteenths, so that's why we do that. So I'm just tracing this around, eyeballing 3 eighths of an inch. Again, it's not real difficult. And this is that one that needs the vertical cut right here instead of uh, being 90 degrees. So we'll come in, make sure that's vertical there. All right, we'll cut this out. Now this piece here, I cannot run it long on the bottom because remember, we have that little channel that we want to leave. So I'm dry fitting this, checking out, seeing where it's hitting on all my lines. And it looks like we're good. It fits right in there perfectly. So we're going to start laying some contact cement. All right, we got contact cement on everything. Make sure you have these things flipped over in the correct orientation. This one actually goes over here, and this one goes here. So we're going to flip that over onto that. So it, I've done that before. I've made that mistake. But what I did was I just ended up gluing it on the other side. So I had half of it on this one and half of it on that one. It worked out. Um, when you go to apply these, pay more attention to the outside edge than the line that you made on the inside. Because this is what's going to show out here and this is what's important. And the most important thing is to make sure to maintain a square edge out here. You don't want to be in or out or anything like that. Especially in because then you're going to have to sand down your outer one and you're going to lose knife room on the inside. So make sure it stays nice and square and even on the outside as you're gluing this on. So we've let that dry a little bit and we got this first piece on. As you can see, we did a pretty good job keeping that edge square all the way around. You can see there's little imperfections on the edge. Not a big deal because uh, once we get all this together and get ready to stitch, we're going to come through with the belt sander out in the shop and just true this whole edge up here. That way we can get our best stitch. And when we do our grooving, we don't have the little bumps and stuff. But that's what you're looking like right there. You want that good square edge all the way across. So I'll put this other one on and... Uh, I'm going to take it outside and, and belt sand the edges once those are stuck. And then we'll come back through and do the stitching all around the outside of this. But remember, we're going to poke that hole in that other one first. So I'll show you. Okay, there's that little tail we ran along on the other one. Just get your razor knife. Put that down on a surface you can cut on and just trim that off. Not a big deal. You can trim all the way around that. And like I said, we're going to hit that with the belt sander too, so we don't have to be perfect. But as you can see, we did a pretty good job on that side too, getting keeping that thing square. So now that we have the channel in there for the knife, we want to again dry fit the knife. So we're going to set the knife in that channel. Make sure it's 
where we want it to be. Make sure we still have room. Make sure when we draw it out that it's going to clear this corner right here, and it does. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take our other piece that's going to go on top, and we're going to position that where it's going to go. We're not gluing it down. We're just dry fitting here. So we've got that all in there. The knife is in there. We got the spacers in there. So now what we can do, as soon as we got this as good as we can get it, we're going to fold this over where it's going to go. I should have left that button out of there. I put that button in too soon. But I think I'm going to be able to eyeball it and get that in there. So it's going to go right there. So I'm going to get a visual reference and then I'm going to go straight down on there. So I'm looking from this side, that's going to work. So that's where our hole is going to go on that one. So like I said, leave that button out. That way you can poke down through that hole. I got a little ahead of myself there, but it's all right. Same size hole. Going to reach right in there. Center it right on your punch mark. And punch it. Remember from the smooth side. We got our hole in there. We'll get our little hard plate here so we don't screw the table up. Even though that does give the table a little more character having all the little gouges in it. And I did build this table. So if I build it, I can fix it. And I got to do some work on it anyway. All right. We put that on the back, inside. So we're going to put that on the little anvil. And we're going to put that snap there. We're going to get our little punch. We're going to put it inside that little uh, post area. Let me find my hammer. There it is. And remember, twist this, uh, twist the punch as you as you hit on it. Right, we're going to check it. And that is snug. It's not turning. That's what we want. So, again, when everything's all together, that's going to snap right over there and hold the knife in place. Keep it from coming out. We're going to let that dry for a little minute. minute. Let that adhesive dry. And uh, Kelly's home. We're going to go up and make some dinner. And I'll come back down and finish her up. So despite my best efforts, I ended up with a little ledge on one side. It wasn't perfectly square. And it never really is. But a little trip out to the shop to the belt sander squares that right up. And it looks real nice. If you don't have a belt sander, get you um, a little razor knife. Or just like a little exacto knife and just come along and you can just finely tune that edge just trim it slowly make sure it's really sharp and be careful use kind of a slicing motion don't be pulling on it to where you're going to cut yourself but you're probably going to have to come towards you so you can see what you're doing but just be careful with it and just kind of use a slicing motion and you can trim that edge up just take your time but since I got a belt sander, that's what I did. And uh, now we're going to do the stitching. We're going to groove this edge here. Uh, we're going to do a dry fit right now with the knife. Not that it's going to make a difference because we're beyond the point of no return. But it fits nicely. That will snap. And starting to look like a knife sheath.
All right, we'll be back. Now, if you wanted to do some tooling on the front here, and if you don't know what tooling is, it's pretty much just stamping to give you a design, really cool design on here. You would need to do that before you glued it to the body of the holster or the, the sheath. So right before we glued this, you could take this and tool all this in, and then you would glue it on and then we'd stitch it on if you're going to do tooling. I'm not going to do tooling on this one, so I didn't have to worry about it. So as you're stitching, you see the groove in the front, you got a groove in the back. So when you're shoving your all through, you want to try to be as vertical as you can be so you can hit that back groove. If you're off a little bit, it's not the end of the world, you can always pull the all back out a little bit and then readjust and poke it back through. That's not the preferred thing to do. The preferred thing to do is get it right. But I don't always get it right either. And before I'm done here, you're probably going to see a stitch that's a little crooked on the back. So, But that's what you're shooting for. Try to keep it as straight as you can as you push it through. Try to keep it as vertical as possible. So sometimes this thread's a little too tight to pull with just your fingers. Remember, you got to take it loose from the tensioner there. I keep a little pair of needle nose pliers in my kit, and I'll grab that and I'll wrap it around a couple times, and it'll help you get that first initial pull. And then you got enough through that where you can pull it with your hands. Remember, three times what you need to go around here. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to stitch to here and then I'll restart and go to here because I'll just go through that same hole. And what that's going to do is going to keep me from having so much thread I got to pull through. So that's a little trick you can do. All right, we got the one side done. I didn't have any stitches pull through, so that was nice. The back all stayed in the groove worked out well almost looks like a machine stitch doesn't it you can do that kind of quality work you don't need to buy a 900 hundred dollar machine all you need is this little gizmo right here and yes you could go through and pre-punch all of these holes and the all would go through a lot easier if you did that or drill them do whatever you wanted to do but I've just always done it this way, and if I'm going to pre-punch him, I might as well be punching it through with the thread in it. So that's what I've been doing. So I'm going to get this top stitch done, and then we'll move on from there. There's not much left. It's starting to look like a knife sheath, isn't it? Looking pretty cool. Okay, done and done. Real proud of myself on this one. I don't have any loops pulled through. And everything stayed in the groove on the back. So that's uncommon, but uh, I'll take it. That's nice. So what I'm going to do now, I have this handy little tool here that uh, trims the corners off so the corners aren't so sharp. So you just get in here like this. And it's got a little sharp edge on the inside. You gotta make sure you don't have it turned too far one way or the other, because it'll gouge the side of the leather. So try to stay in the middle as much as you can. And that just takes a little bit right off that outside edge. So it's not such a drastic corner. Just kind of work your way around.
All right. Let's do the other side real quick. This is not something that you have to do. If you have a belt sander, you could round over the edge just a little bit on that. If you had a really fine razor blade, I'm sure you could do it that way too if you're re real careful. This is just really handy. And the tool's not that expensive. Not like you're gonna spend a week's wages on this little tool. Almost done. All right, I'm going to come up on here a little bit. Do this little strap as well. Cut down this side. All right, and that's all I'm going to worry about. Now, I'm not going to dye this. I like the natural color, but I will probably end up putting some uh, conditioner on it later. But right now, I'm going to let it ride. I am, however, going to burnish the edge. And normally, when they burnish the edge, they're just going to get the edge wet. And you're just going to hit it with your burnishing tool. Let me go get some water and I'll show you what that looks like. So I went ahead and put the conditioner on it using this stuff right here. Pretty good stuff. You can see it darken the letter up quite a bit. And as it dries, that color will even out. But uh, while that's wet, I'm going to take my burnishing tool. And I'm just going to go down the edge like this. And I'm only applying pressure in that direction. I'm lifting up when I come back. You want to get all those little fibers going the same direction on the end. And you'll see that edge start to shine a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. And that's what you're looking for. Some of your tools could be used as burnishing tools. You don't even have to have nothing fancy. Just use the, use the handle of your wooden tool. Pretty much does the same thing. Probably why they got that little groove in there, maybe. I don't know. Flip it over. All right. I'm going to leave that for now. It's pretty shiny on the edge, but I'm going to show you what else I do too. It's going to take a minute. I'm going to let this dry, but I got a little fancy tool out in the shop that I use. Well, it's not fancy, but I'll show you it's a little bit different and it burnishes it much better. But you know that looks good. Looks good now. I mean, nothing wrong with that. You can leave it just like that. It'd be fine. So we'll be right back. So what I have is this little buffing wheel that's got a little arbor on it and I just put it in my drill press and spin it at high speeds and then you take the sheath remember which way you were rubbing that before I was rub always rubbed down towards the point so if this thing's turning this way you want to run it this way right along that edge and that'll really burnish that edge real good and darken it up and I'll show you so that little buffer wheel, all I do is put a little wax on it, a little household wax, like the stuff they uh, used to can with. Um, you could use candle wax for all that matter, just rub a candle on that wheel, but it makes it look like somebody's been wearing that thing for 20 years, and that's what you're looking for. The color is evened out real nicely. I'm not going to put the knife back in it tonight because the moisture from that conditioner could cause that raw steel to rust. So I'm going to let this dry real good overnight. Um, it did say to hit this thing with a soft rag once it dries, so I'll do that real quick. 
Now, if you look at these tools, that's really all I used uh, to put this together. That is not much. That's really not a lot of tools. You could get away with not buying that. You probably wouldn't have to have that. Remember, we didn't use that. So, you really didn't have to use that. It does lay those stitches down in there a lot better, but... You wouldn't absolutely have to have that, but even if you did, what's that, uh, five tools right there to make a nice little sheath? You could do more than this. You know, I got this whole box of tools, all kinds of stamps, all kinds of everything, and all of this, and that didn't use much more than that. Yeah, there's, there's stuff, times, and, and, reasons to use all this stuff if you're doing tooling and all this other stuff but you don't need a lot to get going and do and do something so we'll see you in the morning oh i should have told you uh, if you haven't seen saddle stitching all they do is they pre-punch or pre-drill these holes and you use two needles uh, they're leather sewing needles you put one needle on either end of your thread and usually they got some kind of fixture to clamp this in, like a little wooden clamp, and they'll clamp it up on edge. Otherwise, it's a pain. But uh, you run the, run the needle through the first hole all the way, and then you go to the second hole, you run the one needle through this side, and you run one needle through this side, and you can do wrap uh, one needle around the loop of the other and then pull it through. And then you go to the next hole, you run one needle this way and one needle that way and pull it pull it through. And that's all you do. When you get to the end, you tie a knot like I did, like a square knot or even a triple. Run it through three times. And then pull that knot right into the inside of that uh, leather. And that's what we did with that hole right there. There's a knot inside that hole all the way inside the leather all right okay folks there she is came out really nice i hope i've convinced you that this is something that you can do and i hope you you try it because it's really a satisfying project it's kind of therapeutic doing all that stitching just sitting there you could turn on some music or something like that but uh i really like it this may be a keeper so till next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you. Come back and see us.